live from Soho, New York City. It's Warble Electronics and Becky Stern. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. It's January 28th here live in snowy New York. With me is Phil, Mr. Lady Ada himself. What is on today's show, Phil? I'm glad you asked, Becky. On today's show, Warble Wednesday. We're going to tear down a Ringley. Material spotlight. We're keeping it Bluetooth. Bluetooth is a material now. I'm calling oh, it. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Look at what I did. It's element It's a mistake. It's element B. It's component of the week. I'm sorry. It's all right. I'm saying <laughs> this is completely made out of blue teeth. <laughs> Except tools Tool we like. These are totally tools. <laughs> Not made out of blue teeth. Sorry. I think I, I got I the um, screwdrivers. We'll fix it in post. Yeah. Questions and answers. You got questions? Becky has answers. If you have a question about wearable electronics, you can ask it uh, during the show now or later or before on Twitter, Google+, YouTube, the blog, um, wherever. You can find a place for a little comment box. You can ask me and Adafruit a question about wearable electronics. I will queue it up for a future show, make you eligible to win a giveaway. This, today we're giving away a Flora. That's right. All that and more on <coughs> wearable electronics with Becky Stern cuts tear down. Whoops, I forgot. To <laughs> okay, this is the right one. No, that one has music. There's not one without music. No, there's not one without music. No, oops. Right, this, this is where Blue Electron with Becky Stern. You already heard music. You're going to hear music again. You know, like, we're just making sure that no shows in January were, like, too polished. We know until so we get into February. much about everything right now. This is why it's totally chill. I can click around anything I want. Anyways, the code is uh, tear down. If you would like to get um, some tools to use to tear down things or some, some wearable electronics components, you can use code teardown and get 10% off all day today. Okay. All right. Well, you want to you wanna kick this off? Yeah. All right, let's yeah, kick it off. For all sure. Right. So first up is Wearable Wednesday. We have the best, longest running series of blog posts about wearable electronics. Yes. It's amazing. Yes. So if you, you if you like to go on the bloggity blog, you can find every week um, a lot of really cool posts by a lot of different uh, Adafruit authors writing in the coolest stuff. Leslie posted up this German shoe company that made these um, these LED shoes. They look a lot like the Firewalker sneakers. Lots of people asked us, can I buy Firewalker sneakers from you? I say, no, yeah. sorry, I'm not going to make you a pair. You have to make yourself a pair. This German company put some LED strip inside a translucent sole of some shoes, selling them on their um, shop online um, people, out of Munich. A lot of people think the Germans are just good at like precise engineering of cars, like BMW. They're also very good at light-up shoes. Not a lot of people don't know. I, they also are very good at wearing the appropriate attire for the activity they are doing, and right. I um, pride myself on being part German for, That's right. for that reason. That's right. I also know some funny Germans, so for those of you who think that Germans don't have a sense of humor, I know really? several funny Germans. With shoes like this, I would say you got to have a sense of humor. You would be instantly a funny German? Instantly. I think they have retroreflective stuff on the soles. Speaking More of shoes. speaking of LED shoes, MIT just had a workshop for high school girls where they used Flora and our Firewalker tutorial to make these shoes, mm -hmm. which look really awesome. A big, big workshop. Yeah, a big workshop, like an all-day thing with lots of different elements, and you can read all about it on our site and the MIT News site okay. by clicking over to the blog. This is a shoe sample. Yeah, I did it on purpose. There's, oh, okay. there's shoes. I mean, yeah. Um, this is um, an Instructables user made uh, these inductive charging, sorry, inductive heating slippers. Mm. So his girlfriend's feet are cold, and he like writes in this so sweet, the first line of his Instructables. Like, I built these slippers to solve the problem of my girlfriend's feet being cold. And they heat up. And they heat up. So they That's use cool. the Adafruit inductive, uh, char the basic inductive charging pair, um, so that when they are on the plywood bases, they are heating up using some recycled heating pads that he found in like a self-heating scarf or something. And uh, so they get warm when they're on their bases. And then when you put them on and walk away, then they're all, they're warm and ready for your feet. Okay, so you have to like there, get them warmed up, and then you can. Go about your yeah, day. so like if you were to get out of bed, you could keep your feet warm that way. Or if you just get home and you take your shoes off and your feet are feeling, okay. your toes are so feeling like cold. electric blankets for your feet. Uh huh. That's yeah, fine. very cool project. Okay, okay, there's one that's not shoes. I put all the shoe ones in a row because this fun. is like a shoe for your wrist. <laughs> so it'd be a glove, right? Is that a glove? That's a glove. <laughs> yes. That's what a glove is called. Yes. All right. A gripping glove. And a slipper would be mittens or something. I. Because it doesn't have toes. Let's not get into the vibram. Um, feet. Hand Fe feet, glo feet gloves. Hand shoe. Um, this, this is a hand is shoe that tell time. <laughs> this is, we'll start over. This is James Chin's smartwatch that he wrote in to share with us. He's a high school student um, here in New York who I met at an iBeam workshop. Yeah. And he wrote in to me to tell me about his um, smartwatch prototypes. Got a pro um, 
Pro Trinket OLED display. And then he's got this little, um, these little female headers on the side. And he told me it's for um, connecting different modules. You can see here he has an LED module. He also ha wants to, he wants to make an infrared module so he can make it be a TV be gone. And he he's looking for ideas for more modules to plug into his um, wow. to plug into his DIY smartwatch. So you should let him know in the comments if you have suggestions. It's cool. Apple announced their Apple Watch so far ahead of time yeah. that very young people are like, well, I'm not going to wait till April. Yeah, I'm of just going to go ahead and make it. my own. Right. So that's what. Do you remember um, Zach who made the Google Glass um, like? Okay, laser. He made his flashlight mod into a laser, yeah, yeah, and then he yeah. had that big smartwatch thing with the vet, with the VFD display. I feel yeah. like him and James would get along. They can get together and talk yeah. about stuff. Okay. All right. Next up. Cool project, James. This is something that's like a shoe for your finger, but you. No, it's not. I'm gonna stop it with the shoe thing. You started it. I'm gonna end it. It's not a shoe. Thing. <laughs> with the shoe for your. Is this a shoe? Oh, that's one of those little things that give you have a bunch of. Paperwork. Is this a shoe for your head? It's a shoe. For, it's a shoe. It's a head shoe. It's like a boot, but it's on your head. <laughs> <Becky>? Okay, <laughs> thanks. Um, this is the Ringly. We talked about it when um, it came in the mail. It's the Bluetooth notification ring. Uh, they just secured another round of funding, VC-funded company. You took this apart. I took it, you, I took it apart. Can you put um, it back together? No, no, because I took it apart with a hammer. Okay. Um, it was glued, it's like waterproof and glued together really securely. Something that didn't make the video cut was that um, one of the things I do when I can't get thing, something open, I can't figure out like an entry point at all, is I just like dunk it in acetone, hoping that it'll soften the gaskets or soften the glues or whatever and make okay. it easier to pry open. And I dunk this thing in acetone and I let it sit there for like 10 minutes and then and I like moved the jar and Colin was here and he looked at it and he goes, oh look, it just lit up still inside the solvent. It's been sitting in for 10 minutes. So like the thing is really waterproof and oh, whatever cool. glue they use either is not soluble in acetone or is so packedly tight in there, pa packed tightly in there that it, um, the acetone couldn't make it through in 10 minutes. Oh, okay. That's so it still cool. worked perfectly yeah, fine yeah, yeah. when it was soaked in acetone for 10 minutes. A long time ago, I, when Bluetooth first came out, this is like a really long time ago, yeah. um, I, I put, um, I had a pocket PC because this is one of the things in this Bluetooth thing. And then I, I put it in this bag and I put it underwater and then I used another phone and I and I communicated with it. And this is underwater. You underwater. did Bluetooth underwater I was like, test. Bluetooth underwater. And I, I sent You're still doing that by the way. You still no, you're like Becky, Raspberry Pi underwater. Coat yeah. it and never wet. I only have like one trick. <laughs> put electronics Feel we have a fill covered in water. Yeah. Just stuck it underwater. Yeah. So I sent emails to people and they didn't really understand. They're like, why are you putting this underwater? But it was it was important yeah. to me. <laughs> All right. It's still important. Do you want to run this? Um, yeah, so we took it apart. Uh, I had Lamour record that usually I do the intros and the outros for the teardowns, but Lamour did it because I got laryngitis. So yeah. I'm mostly better now. And so take it away, Lamour. Okay. Hey everybody, it's me, Lady Ada. I'm here at the Adafruit Factory, and it's time for another wearable teardown. This week, we're going to be tearing down the Ringly. It's a dainty cocktail ring that's also a Bluetooth notification device. The Ringly app for iOS and Android lets you customize color and vibration settings for different apps and contacts. When you tap it twice, it lights up to let you know it's still connected to the phone. The Ringly box is also the charger, and it has its own battery, too, for convenient charging while traveling. To open up our Ringly, we tapped it gently with a hammer until the stone popped out. The circuit inside is like a teeny burrito of flex PCB wrapped around the pager motor and battery. Okay, now that Becky has taken apart the Ringly box, let's check it out for more details on what's going on inside. So here is a 250 milliamp hour battery. So, you know, not too bad, pretty big battery. And it's got a protection cell as well over here. And over here, it even says, this is the Ringley version 0.5 box, and here's the boost circuit. It even says boost, so you know that this is the boost circuitry. And then over here is the charging circuitry. It comes from the USB, charges up this battery, and then boosts it back to five volts out to these two pogo pins. And these pogo pins are what's used to touch the Ringley contacts on the bottom here to charge the Ringley itself. So there's sort of like a, a backup power supply. You can always keep the USB plugged in, but on the go, this battery will probably recharge it for you know maybe a week or so without having to need USB. All right, so now we're onto the really fun part, which is the Ringley itself. So the stone comes off of the top, and inside is this nice cavity where Becky kindly removed the electronics. Now the electronics are so small, 
it's only worth it to look at it on the microscope. So let me unwrap this burrito of electronic love. Inside is a teeny little battery. This is maybe a 50, let's see. Doesn't have markings, but I'm gonna guess that this little battery here is like maybe 25 or 30 milliamp hours. And there's also a little vibration motor. This is the same kind of vibration motor we have in the Adafruit shop, so it's very familiar. And this is what adds buzzing feedback. And you can see the Ringley logos here and these little holes that add um, the ability to flex the circuit and close it upon itself. On the opposite side, we actually have the circuitry. In the center is our favorite Bluetooth Low Energy chip, the NRF51822. A great little chip, super low power, comes with a Cortex M0. So you can do pretty much all the processing you need as well as Bluetooth on one chip. And then you see this cute little antenna strip down here. It goes over to a little microchip antenna on the side. And you can see the strip line as well. And then um, over here we have a little bit more circuitry. I'm gonna guess that there's an accelerometer probably here, maybe a motor driver chip, one of these, and then a battery protection circuit as well. And over here you can see this little LED. This is an RGB LED. And what's cute is on the back there's um, test points for it that even say red, green, and blue. You can see it a little bit here. So that's how they test the LED and it shines out the side. Such a miniature little RGB LED, but it, it's pretty bright and the crystal makes it look even better. So all together, you know, you've got like a crystal, uh, all-in-one Bluetooth arm core and a battery. There's not a lot going on here, but it's so beautifully packaged up. Really elegant how they managed to get everything to fit inside of a ring using this sort of origami flex circuit. And uh, that's it. So a great little wearable. I think it's beautifully designed. Whoever did this um, did a really great job fitting it all together and into a very wearable package. So that's the Ringley, um, one of the smallest wearables. I really like this one. I, I think I might get one of my own. Uh, check back in a month, we'll do another wearable teardown. For this and many other great teardowns, we use the Adafruit USB microscope and its articulated stand. Check out our other wearable teardowns in the playlist, and if you have recommendations for other wearables you'd like us to tear down, put them in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and subscribe for more wearable videos from Adafruit. And we're back. Did you guys like that one? That's cool. Good work. It's neat inside, huh? Look how pretty. Yeah. Um, I ordered, I have another one already ordered because I was actually really sad to take this one apart. Yeah. Um, it's really useful and nice and pretty and like, You did a good job. And um, only when it vibrates four times does it feel like there's a spider on my hand. All mm -hmm. the other times of vibration don't feel like a spider on my hand. And okay. even then you get used to it pretty quickly. Um, comes yeah. in different sizes. If you have questions about this teardown, you can ask them in the comments and I'll answer them next week. Okay. And the other it's thing cool, right? is if you want to get some of the stuff needed to take this yep. or something like it apart, you can... Or to build it. something like it, you can use code teardown. Yeah, that's the code for today. And you enter it in on checkout, and you get like ten percent off. Everything is for gift certificates, and Eagle Cad. And Eagle Cad, we're yeah. We're allowed to give discounts for that. Right. Okay. Component of the week. We won't talk about that. I think. Component of the week is what? What is it? It's the uh, Bluetooth LE module. Totally component of the week. Yes. Totally not that totally. other thing. And hey, I made, made the show from scratch today. And it's made out of blue teeth from this little creature. Mm. And they grow back, don't worry. Oh, we let them go. right, and it doesn't hurt when they oh, pull them out. Let them go, let them go, grow back, and he comes back. It's like shearing like a llama. I don't know if I, how I feel about What's it. Those if one? formerly vegan Becky feels okay about you harvesting blue teeth from, like, from Smurf babies. It's like an alpaca. <laughs> and it's a very lucrative business. Okay, these kind of like Angora rabbits. Exactly like that, except for their... They're a little cute, and Gargamel's always trying to get them, and they're rascally, and anyways. So, uh, what is this thing? This, <laughs> this is um, the closest thing we've got to um, the chip that's in the Ringley. Yeah. So, um, if you want to make a Bluetooth low energy device that communicates from your phone um, with Adafruit parts, you can get this, and you can use our um, Adafruit, what's it called, the Blue Fruit I.O. app? Yeah, it's Blue just Fruit just, I.O. If you search for Adafruit in the iOS App Store, in, in iTunes, in which, iTunes, in the App Store, the app, app it, just store. search for Adafruit and you'll, you'll see, find it. You'll see Circuit Playground, which is our calculator. Yeah. You'll see Mo's Resistance, which is our game. It's our game. And then you'll see the Blue Fruit app. Blue Fruit I.O. or something like that. Yeah. And it um, and that'll enable allow you to communicate to the Nordic 
chip on uh, the BLE module and uh, make devices that uh, have actions based on stuff that happens on your phone. That's it's right. a very basic demo app for iOS. And then um, if you're on Android, we don't have a solution for that, but Nordic does. There's an, um, it's like the NRF um, like BLE tester app or something yeah. in the Android store, and you can use that to send UART messages uh, to the Blue Fruit from your Android phone, which yeah. is pretty cool. So, yeah. um, we have an Android app coming out, too. Yeah. Yeah, we do. It just takes longer, sorry. We also have some Flora blue, Bluetooth low energy oh, stuff coming soon, too. You know what I saw yesterday? I saw uh, Blue Fruit Flora. Yeah, okay. After this, do you want to see it? We just I would like to see it. Came in. It looks nice. I would like to see it. Yeah. Maybe I could tweet a picture of it. You can tweet a picture of it. Okay, so look okay. forward to that later. You were trying to trick me. I'm not going to click that. That's something I don't want to click. Oh, no, I meant to do the code there. Sorry. I'm not going to click it. Yeah, it's all like right. A, it's like a little minefield. <laughs> so the only thing wrong with this show is the order of the slides, then. No, nothing is wrong <laughs> with this show at all. So, yeah, it's just I meant to do the code there, but I wasn't Everything wearing my glasses. Is perfect. So, yeah. Or you can go there. Yeah, yeah. So if you would like to get a Blue Fruit LE, Module, you can use code teardown to get 10% off. They are in stock. Yeah. So go for it. Yeah. Okay. Smart clicking, Phil. I know. Next is not, this is wrong too. <laughs> it's this one. Yeah. I'm just, it's tools we love. It's fine. Yeah. Everything is good. It's Everything totally is cool. perfect. Mm. This is, these are made out of mm. blue teeth. No, I already did that. No part. blue teeth. These <laughs> are uh, my favorite screwdrivers. So uh, they come in a handy case, is the other slide, is them in a handy, very nice little case. Um, we have covered our uh, bigger piece screwdriver set on the show before uh, with the interchangeable bits. However, these six screwdrivers are all in one. The little caps spin, so you can like hold on to it, bury the screwdriver in your hand, and then like spin That's it. That's fun. So you don't so you don't hurt yourself. It's easier. Kind of it's for more precise um, alignment for getting screws started, and um, they're just really great to have in your toolbox. Really good quality, last a long time. In fact, they don't last a long time at my desk because um, they get pilfered. Because people like them so much, they borrow them and don't give them back. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Including maybe me. I don't know. Do I borrow them from myself and don't give them back? No. I think people do. Go. They walk off. You have a very organized set of tools at your desk. So yes. I think if people want to take tools, that's the place to go because you can find them easy. Yeah. Oh, and I like yeah, that. No, you don't I waste time. and I like sharing my tools. You I don't, don't think that time. I had a. I didn't have a whole set of these walk off. I had them like walk off one by one. Yeah. Yeah. Lamore does too. She, she, I remember when we shared a set of these for the new photo, new product photos. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, they're really good screwdrivers. I like them a lot. Um, okay. Pick yourself up a set for ten percent off. That's right. I'm Look. gonna go to question and answers now, because that's because that. I see what happened. This one yeah, goes yeah. there. Okay. Everything's ah. fine. No one knows. No one can see on this side of the screen. They can only see. They can only see us. All they right. Can't so see what's going on here. every week we answer your questions about wearable electronics. Um, if you have them you can win a prize, it's usually a flora, just by asking your question and getting an answer on the show. So you win two things. You get your question answered and you are eligible to win a prize. So you can ask as many questions as you want. If you have more than one question, ask more than one time. If I don't answer your question, you can ask it again. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any questions about the questions? I don't have any questions about the questions. I'm just going to read the questions from okay. people. All right, really nice go. people who decided to send us questions. This is... First one, I have to buy some resistors, and a good friend is printing the cases for me, but I will be making three of the UV Manicur lights soon. Picture of the perma proton circuit guard diagram doesn't seem to match. Some of the resistors seem to be doubled up in the pick and not in the sketch. Am I missing something? No, you're not. No, I don't think so. Um, the resistors aren't doubled up. I don't know what you mean by that, but um, here's the diagram on the left, and um, you can see that each LED, and then there's, there's two diagrams in the... Uh, guide. There's one that just has the LEDs, which is like the first step, and then you have to add all the resistors. And you can see in the picture on the right, I made two of these, and on one of them I put the resistors on the on the side of the board with the LEDs, and the other one I put the resistors on the back. So you can choose whether you want to put the resistors on the front side or the back side, depending on whether you want to see them inside the cavity um, with the, LE the UV LEDs, or you want to hide them inside the um, 3D printed enclosure. But um, I do believe my circuit diagram does match my circuit. Okay. But when you build it, if you find a discrepancy, please let me know. All right. Next up. This is from Steve. After spending time on the weekend looking through the Adafruit blog and online, I'm looking for some help with diffusing NeoPixels on my mascot relay for life. I have the word hope, and I would like to backlight it like you did with your glowing star Chuck Taylor sneakers using EL panels, but I want to have it change color, so I started looking at diffusing NeoPixels. I did find one by Pound OH Summit. They did not explain what they use for diffusing. I would like to light up the block shape behind each letter as if it were an EL panel. 
Thanks, Steve. That's a tough question, Steve. And we get this a lot. How do I recreate the look of EL panel with LEDs? And it's very difficult. Um, one way to do it would be to like use just all like color OLED displays, but those are really, really expensive and we don't sell them. So you walk around with a TV strapped to you. Yeah, but I have seen that like yeah, in the OLED like dress and stuff that's like solid yeah. diffused. But yeah. anyway, with NeoPixel specifically, I would use the um, high density ones so that you get a nice density of light to begin with. And then um, if you want, if it's a sweatshirt, you could probably get away with puffing out maybe up to like a half an inch away. Really the thing that makes the best diffusion is space and then like a, a translucent material in that space that helps disperse the light. Um, it's going everywhere. Yeah, and so um, the more space, like if the light's going out at an angle like this, the more space between the source and the, um, the diffusion material, the more chance the light has to spread out before it hits its terminus of spreading out. And um, so I would recommend using the high density strip which of course is pretty power hungry, but you can you can lower the brightness to reduce the current draw. Um, and then um, quilt batting and white fabric, not necessarily felt because um, it's not it's not very see through, but um, maybe like a um, a white cotton on top of a um, quilt batting, which is just like a fiber fill, but in a planar like roll out okay. form, um, and that's going to give you a translucent white like uh, scattering material that's also flexible and sewable. Okay. Uh, and I would, um, but I would talk to your crafty friends and ask them if they know how to do uh, like applique quilted letters. Okay. If anyone has an unlimited supply of that aerogel stuff, that'd be fun to try. Yeah, maybe. It's I, like I, a million guess. Dollars I don't know. And what is it? It's just really light. It's, it's lightweight. Light, but, yeah, but it's a solid. So that would probably It's a confusing. solid, but is it a, is it a flexible solid? Yeah, we got some and I broke it. Yeah. It, oh, no, I remember touching it. Like, that's yeah, not good at all. That stuff is super brittle. You touch it, and it breaks into a thousand pieces. Yeah, but no. besides that, it was a lot of fun. Don't use that. Besides all the disappointment and breaking, it was great. Okay, I'm going to summarize this one. Basically, this person wants to know, what do all the pads on the Flora do? Right, so, and like, why would you choose the different pins, and, and why? And, and, and what do they do? And now it's time for what I like to call Becky Break It Down. <laughs> okay. Becky Break It Down. So... Um, Every Arduino has a chip on it, and the chip has all the pins, and the pins are capable of different things by themselves based on the things that the chip manufacturers think you might want to do. So digital I.O. pins can do things like light up LEDs. Some digital I.O. pins can, can use um, pulse width modulation to make LEDs fade um, gradually. Some of the pins are analog inputs, allowing you to connect uh, things like variable resistance sensors to them. And the way, reason some of them are dedicated to a specific type of communication, like um, on Flora, D3 and D2 are also the I squared C data and clock pins. And that's a specific digital protocol that um, our sensors use to communicate. And the Atmega32 for microcontroller is uh, set up to handle I squared C over those two pins. Um, to answer your question of when do you use them, it's a, it's a mixture of what you want to connect and do, whether it's a digital output or an analog input, and also like uh, where it's physically located on your board. If you're making a wearable circuit, Flora is designed with the pads all spread out so that you don't have to cross threads. Specifically when connecting NeoPixels, you asked about why do we always use D6 for NeoPixels. That's because NeoPixels need three things. They need power, ground to complete a power circuit, and they also need the data for what color to be. So <clears throat> you probably put those next to each other and make it easy for make, you. Put them next to each other because they're in order, and you can see on the on the pinout diagram on the lower right is VBAT. That's, that's power, um, that's battery power, so a lot capable of delivering a lot of amperage. Um, ground is up there on the right, and then D6 and D12 are in the middle. And the reason we usually use D6 um, is because it's a lower number than 12, and it's between ground and VBAT, which is also on the NeoPixel, sewable NeoPixels, like how they're physically oriented. We could use 12 just as easily. It would be fine. Not all pins can be the data pin for NeoPixels, but most of them can, and that's because it requires a high um, precision timing protocol and some of the pins can't do that. So um, I hope that answers your question. It's, it's a mixture of what the pins are designed to be able to do and what their electrical capacities are and then also like what you want to do with your circuit and where everything's laid out. Specifically on the Flora, we wanted to make things um, 
not cross over each other as much as possible. So you can see that on the, uh, our digital I squared C sensors require power ground, data, and clock. And we put those all four in a row on the upper left there, you can see, so that you can sew them with conductive thread really easily. Yeah. And to summarize, the Eurythmics said it best. Some of these pins want to be used, and some of these pins want to be used by you. Some of these pins. Well, some of them want to use you. Someone want, I was trying to Some be of nice. them want to use you. And some of these pins want to be used by you. And some of them want to be abused by you. And that was, they were way ahead of their time. <laughs> that song's about electronics. I right? know what our next music video is going to be. Yeah. I can love Annie Lennox. Wow. <laughs> if my voice were completely better, I would be breaking into song right now. You're reading the lyrics off of the screen. <laughs> no one knows that. You can't see. That's not true. <laughs> Do, 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 I do, 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 well, well, yeah, yeah, Rap Genius. What are you talking? <laughs> because Rap Genius is a is a um, advertising funded site. Yeah, it's just all sketchy and gross. But check this out. Um, as of today, did you look. How I've seen that they yeah. do it for um, Google Play. Yeah, for Google Play, I've seen that recently. Amazing. Finally. Yeah. Finally, that's really smart. Okay, anyways. Well, because right. then Google gets the advertising dollars, not Rap Genius. Yeah, did you like, see there was a big article about Rap Genius like recently. Yeah, if you're on like a PC and you like look for song lyrics, all of a sudden you have like malware or something. Yeah, like, it's true. It's gross. Okay. It's true. Anyways, back I hope that answers your question. If you need more, I'm gonna yeah. Just listen to that song and all questions are answered. Okay, two questions. Sorry. Don't be sorry, except sorry for yourself because you could ask twice and get answered twice. It's fine. I'm looking <laughs> for a, p a pair of light up wedges. I made last year using EL tape from... Upgrade. She's oh, looking upgrade. to upgrade sorry. to NeoPixel. That's right. She wants to upgrade from her EL tape to NeoPixel LED strips. After measuring the shoes, I figured out that a half a meter is good length to use for both. What can I use to power the strip? What would be portable and able to hide well while wearing a shoe? I also notice the vibration steps disrupts the battery after a while. Do you know of any solution for that? I bet you do. Um, I, uh, the vibration affecting the steps after a while has got to be that your connection is breaking. There's no like interference that would happen based on walking around for a while. So it's got to be, you got to work on strain relief for your wires if you're getting after a while if the, if the light's cutting out. Okay. It's because you're breaking one of the wire connections. Um, anyway, the, uh, this is a cool question. She wants to upgrade her uh, EL shoes to NeoPixel LEDs. Um, and you're right, the battery supply is going to be completely different. You can use a Flora or, if you want something smaller, a Gemma or a Trinket to, to drive your NeoPixel LEDs. And then um, a Li poly battery pack is great. You should um, you could tape it up in a really sturdy fabric tape like gaffer's tape. Uh, to f protect it from abrasions, and then like sew it to your shoe, or like make an ankle bracelet for it. Um, it's definitely going to be a smaller battery pack than the one you're used to carrying around for your um, EL inverter slash battery pack. So, um, any of the Li Poly batteries we have in the shop, um, you can also use the alkaline packs, like the ones we use on the Firewalker sneakers, the the three AAA. Those those will last a, a couple hours depending on your lighting pattern and brightness. Okay. So please show us the results. I'd also like to see your EL shoes too. That's a question and answer is for today. Thank you very much. So we're good questions, guys. Everyone. Keep how them coming. Do they, how do they enter? How do they um, do that? Those questions were mostly from YouTube and Google+. Plus. So there's a Google+, Plus event for the show. You can ask there on any past show, too, although I only check the past couple ones for every week. Anyway, um, Google+, Plus, YouTube comments, Twitter, yeah. comments on the blog. Yeah. Those are the main places I check for questions. If yeah. I find your question relevant, I will cut it up on a little piece of paper and put it in my hat, and I will draw one of you to win a flora. Okay. Um, and if you didn't win today, just ask another question, and maybe you'll win again some other time. Okay. The winner, the winner is? The winner is Julian. Congratulations. You didn't have to ask your question separately because you just won a flora. Hopefully, that'll be useful for your wedges. That's perfect. Yeah. That's great timing. So, um... You can email support at adafruit.com to claim your flora, and I'll try to reach out to you on YouTube. You okay. asked a question on last week's show. Thanks for watching. Okay. That's the show for the week. Um, tonight, we have a bunch of stuff going on. <laughs> yeah. So tonight at 7.30, if you have a project to show, if you have a project, if you have a, um, Okay. Project to share. You can join our Google Plus Hangout Show and Tell 
at 7.30. That's right. All you have to do is comment on that Google Plus event to yeah. request to be added to the circle, and you'll be invited every week. Yeah, I'm going to be doing that like right now. I have to, I have to add it. I was waiting. Phil will week. add you to the circle, and then yeah. you'll be invited to show up. It gets crowded sometimes, so if you don't get in right away, yeah. keep trying or try I'm again trying the following week. different strategy this week. Good. And, um, and then Ask an Engineer. It's a really fun time. And then right after that, 8 o'clock, is Ask an Engineer with Mr. and Mrs. Lady Ada. She'll yeah. answer some of your um, your other non-wearables related questions. We have amazing big news tonight. I can't even say it right now. You can't even. I can't even. Can't even. Have and you the, seen the, the my favorite BuzzFeed list ever is Renaissance uh, painting babies who can't even? Can't even. No, I haven't. I want to see that. <laughs> it's all the like babies who are like, eh, I can't even. <laughs> um, really and then good. tomorrow we have... 3D Hangouts with, with Noah and Pedro. Noah and Pedro, so if you, um, yeah, they drop some 3D printing knowledge. Yeah. All right, that's everything. Yeah, and I'll see you guys next week. Yeah. Okay, that's the show. Thanks, everybody. Thank we'll you see for you watching. We'll be week. here next week at the same time. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you.